It may be Monday morning, but we're starting with wine. Because why not? <laughs> they do say the best way to learn about wine is by drinking some. So here with a few glasses and a lesson on the most underrated wine regions in the world is Rene Sferazza. <laughs> Excited for this wine tour, Renee. Okay, where are you taking us? Well, you know, today I figured we should dive into some underknown wine regions. Like, mm. when you think about wine, you might think France and Italy, but that's not where wine comes from. Yes. It actually comes from the Fertile Crescent, which I'll dive into in a little bit, but it goes about 8,000 years back mm. when wine was just created, and we as a civilization have brought it across the entire planet. Okay. It's really amazing. So while you might know California, Canada, mm -hmm. France, Italy, there's so much more going on, and we're going to dive into some of those underknown regions today. Okay, I love that. All yeah. right, so if we were to group the wines according to region, uh, what would they be? So you can group winemaking countries into three major regions. You have okay. old world wine regions, new world, and ancient world. Mm -hmm. So old world is basically like anything in Europe yep. and a little bit north of Africa, so like Morocco area. Yeah. New world is outside of that where people have brought the grapes around. So you have like mm -hmm. Canada, United States, South America, Australia, India. Those are all new world. And yeah. then ancient world is around that fertile crescent, which is around the Caucasus Mountains. So you have present day like Turkey, Georgia, Lebanon, oh. Greece, oh. Egypt, that entire area. It's like almost Middle Eastern. That's the fertile crescent. That's the ancient world. And that's a place where you have a lot of wines that used to be popular many moons ago and yeah. the most underrated ones. That's very cool. Isn't that interesting? Because I would have not thought that it started there. It and did then start there. Of course, it's, it's global because it's very important that we get those grapes everywhere in the world. Exactly, exactly. Right? But, so speaking of that, we want to dive into a wine first. Let's do it. We're going to start with some old world wine. I have a wine from Portugal. This mm -hmm. is Port de Sé, and Port de Six, and it's coming from Portugal right over here. You're going to see a lot more Portuguese wines on a wine list, just available, yeah. but they're definitely an underknown region. So the Porta Six White, this is a blend of international and Portuguese grape. You have Arinto, Vecino, a little bit of Viognier and Chardonnay. Very bright and refreshing mm -hmm. wine. Mm -hmm. You want, oh, I'm going to tell you my favorite thing about Portuguese wines. Yeah. The Portuguese pour. The Portuguese pour is great. The pour goes up to here. Oh, yes, it does. I was like, oh, oh yes, okay. It does. <laughs> I think some bars and restaurants in Canada could take a note or two from y'all. They all. definitely could. They definitely right could. Right up to the top of the rim. This so lovely wine. It's great. And this is our perfect underrated old world wine. But Very nice. But let's dive into the new world. That's where we have yeah. a lot more coming up. And I'm heading to India next. Nice. Okay? So we have Sula Vineyards from India. Mm -hmm. Sula Vineyards are really actually well known. You might have heard about Sula wines before. And they are coming from the Nasek region. Okay. There's winemaking regions across all of India. This is their Chenin, the 2022 Chenin Blanc from Sula Vineyards. Okay. And it's just the tip of the iceberg. Give that a little bit of a smell and a taste. You can see it's definitely a different type of Chenin. It's different than Loire. It's different than That's South good. Africa. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's complex. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a lot going on with this, which is beautiful. There's a lot going on with it. A little bit more rustic. It's a yeah. little bit more weighty and a little bit more tropical, mm -hmm. which is totally what you would expect from a warmer winemaking region like India. It's interesting. So India would be considered New World. India is New World, yeah. Which, which is so odd to me. Because I know. I know that there is such a, like, a history <laughs> and what have you, but I understand the division that you're making. It makes perfect sense to me. Exactly. Exactly. Well, the Very cool. grapes were brought there. They weren't yes. grown there originally. Right. That's the new world Absolutely. idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so next up, are we going ancient? We are going ancient, mm -hmm. and I have three wines that we're going to try for it. We're going to start okay. off in Lebanon. Yes. So this is, Lebanon's right over here. It's really tiny. It's yep. just upward from Israel, and mm -hmm. this is the Le Vin de Margi, their Vin de Margi Blanc. Okay. And it is a blend of, yeah, grab one there, because mm -hmm. this bottle is rolling. It's a blend of Sauvignon <laughs> Blanc. Yes. We'll little, catch you, honey, we'll don't catch worry. You, we'll catch you. Viognier and Muscat du Petit Agrin. Mm -hmm. So these are French grapes with a French name. You're getting a totally different side, and Lebanon has so many winemaking regions across all of it. It's very Mediterranean, and yeah. that's the vibe you should be getting with it. It, it, it has that vibe. Delicious. All right, I'm taking you up next to Georgia, which okay. is just north of Turkey. It's another tiny region. Georgia is really quite amazing. It has wine regions across it from the Black Sea and all of its tributaries okay. inland. Yeah. So we're having the United Stars Mukazani Dry Red. Here, yeah. grab a glass and I'll have one too. And this is from the Cajete region. And the Mukazani Valley is the specific region where it's from. And it's made with the grape Saparavi. So we have a native grape here. Very rustic. You get a lot of like almost like 
um, sun-dried tomatoes that's a in deep, this wine. That's a deep, Very deep flavor. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. See, this is the way that... No, this isn't the way that kids should learn history. No, 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 this no, is no, the no. Way, this is the way adults should learn history. Not the children. <laughs> this would be a great way to incorporate history into, into people's university lives. level classes. Maybe. Yeah, continuing with our history, let's go to yes. Turkey. <laughs> so our last wine is from Turkey. Turkey has a lot of wine going on. This yep. is the Gulor Signature Malbec. Beautiful. You've had Melbeck before from a yes. lot of different areas. We've had it from Argentina. But I want you with this to see the terroir, that sense of place that Turkey can bring with this. So you have a little bit more of a rustic mm -hmm. note in there. There's more pepper spices. There's more leather. Mm -hmm. mm. Delicious. With those blue and black fruit notes that Melbeck is known for, yeah. definitely still there. So it is a great way to learn. I will tell you that. So beautiful wines that we can explore. You might not be able to get these at your local liquor retailers, but you will be able to get them at restaurants. Hopefully they will be on some menus mm -hmm. and we will have more of this coming into our country, which is fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. Very nice, Renee. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you.